Well, hi there, it's Brooke. And in this video, I'm sharing with you my flower journey for 2023. Usually I have pretty much of a brown thumb, but this year my flowers did absolutely amazing. When I broke my ankle, my husband, or not broke my ankle, sprained my ankle at the end of June, my husband started watering my flowers and he was giving them like two of my two, I think it's a two gallon, watering can so like four gallons of water and I'm like oh my god you're gonna drown up and they just flourished so flowers love water and I was probably under watering all the previous years that I've done flowers I do have front porch videos from previous years I can link down below so you can go check out my brown thumb this year I did amazing I'm just I'm so excited for next year and I have so many thoughts and ideas and my husband's just gonna constantly tell me to water my flowers. <laughs> I kind of did updates throughout the summer. We start on May 9th, that's when I first got my flowers and I planted them like May 11th. So I kind of go through that with you, kind of tell you about the flowers that I did pick out. And then the last update is on October 25th. It was right there around Halloween that I did finally throw them away and some of them were still doing really good. So next year I kind of want to see how long I can go into November if they keep up how well they did this year. I'm going to share what I learned along the way and then my thoughts on next year kind of throughout the video and at the end. So please watch the updates and I hope you enjoy. So I try to pick out like tall, short, spreading, you know, kind of a variety of fillers. I got Profusion Orange Zinnia, Blue Moon Lobia, or Lobella, Raspberry Dianthus. I think these are so pretty. Nick picked out those. We kind of picked out some together and some, you know, we were just picking out. These are Blue with I Verbena. I got a few of these mixed double petunias. Um, so there's like pinks and purples. So here's some more. And then these are the more pink ones. Dianthus, they're just the rose color. So these are a rocket mix of snapdragons. I picked up some yellow pansy. This is a profusion cherry zinnia. I thought these were cool because it looks like they might have like a little different color to them. And then these are violet dianthes or dianthus, dianthus. I got a rose and then pink and patience and then I got three white begonias and then I also picked up some red begonias oh and one pink begonia Nick picked out a bunch of the salvia so we got the medium rose color two of those the medium purple medium might be size I'm thinking and then the medium red and then I grabbed three of the orange viola and then I also got some white alyssum they had the closest these are the black dragon so we have some silver dust dusty miller I think it looks like um choppy lambs ear Nick picked this out and then I got three like two of the more like two color and then three of the just kind of green of the vinca vine. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna set you up and I'm just gonna play around with my flowers. It is a couple days later. I had to grab a whole nother bag of dirt, but I grabbed another one of these and I grabbed some more of those closest. So I'm gonna finish these up. I have the rest of them to do and then I will show you the end result. I wanted to show you the root system on these yellow pansies. Like It's like completely white. That's craziness. They're both like that. Isn't that crazy? Pretty cool. Okay, I'm all done. I'm gonna show you them and kind of tell you about them. This is the new pot I picked up at Walmart. And I have some blue ones in here. These are gonna be a mix of those snapdragons. And then that's the kind of like spaghetti. This is like a dragon coleosis. It almost needs like something right there. I was thinking about going and grabbing one or another one of these spillers, the Finica Vine for right there. As of now, this is what I have, so I might grab one more kind of spiller 
And then this is my viola. You can tell that the middle plant is like, kind of has bigger leaves or something. I don't know. It's kind of crazy. So I got like a short in the middle and these long ones around. I should have maybe done that differently, but we'll see how that grows. This is just kind of a mix. I got some red and white petunias. This is a begonia, some zinnias, a couple of closies. I'm gonna say those are impatience. And then those are those crazy pansies. I think this one's filled up pretty good. I don't have any issues about it. So then these three, I kind of did all the same with single ones. I got the orange and some whites and then a mix of the double petunias and then each have a spike and then a dark green kind of filler. And then now I think these are full enough. So my alignment of these big ones kind of got a little shifted, but they're gonna look pretty good. We just watched what I did in May and I realized after that May, after I filled up all my flowers and did all those flower pots that I really like doing the full plot, full pots. But I also did learn that if they're too full, then things overshadow each other and then some don't grow as well so I have to find a good balance with that but I do like them fuller and you know with the spillers and the thrillers and the fillers this is where we took the bush out and I first added these three pots from Menards and then the two plant stands and so I did similar flowers in each of these I got marigolds red petunias I want to say those are the dianthes and then impatience and the colsus and then these two have one of those asparagus firms which I have trimmed down because they were kind of like covering all the other flowers and this is a colsus and so is this I love this red one I found that at Walmart these are all flowers from Walmart they've been doing pretty good these are impatience petunias I just kind of have a mix of them and I think they've been doing pretty good and for their position I would probably not put this in the middle again I like it in my other pot where it's kind of around the edge which I will show you everything's growing well except for like I'm kind of worried about these and I'll show you those in like my other pots on how they're not doing as well and then I grabbed another one of the whiskey barrel ones and then these flowers are from Ace Hardware and I just love these these are like a apricot I don't think it was a viola it was something like that though these are the zinnias and they're doing okay I don't remember what this is these are begonias and then these are cosmos which I've never done before and then these are it's something else that's like a mix I can't remember. I'm not a big fan of these like Torintos. They just kind of are a bit blip. These look better. They kind of had fizzled out on me in the Cosmos. So we'll have to come back to those as they grow. And then this is my blue pot. I did all blue and then I added these silver. So they just got some like blue petunias and then more of those Torini, Toronto. There's a Selvia in here. I'm curious how that's going to do. And then some of these, they're white. Oh, they're not pansies. They're something else, I think. But like I said, these I'm just not a big fan of. I think these are doing okay. That's another one I'll have to update you on. And then here's my pot with the snapdragons and they're finally starting to flower but look how big they are. So I like everything in this pot but these they're kind of like the Torintos but or whatever those are called. They look like they're dead. And then that's another Colsus. And then I have some more of that asparagus fern or whatever. And then I did put a big spike in the middle and that's where I added one of my pinwheels. I kind of had a hole in the middle of that. Just that's why I added the spike and then the pinwheel just fit in there nice. But I love how this is just kind of around the side there. So I would definitely do that again. And then I added these petunias, which I showed you, and these impatience, and they're all doing fairly well. And then this was the one, was one of the ones that was on the side of the garage. So I moved everything on the, towards the front of the house. I don't have anything on the other side of the garage because it just wasn't growing. And I like everything in here, but maybe this kind of looks like, it's like those other ones. It kind of looks like it's dead. These, I don't even know if these are the dianthes or what they are that impatience then the colsus is just kind of covering everything up and then the salvia and this one i don't know they're duds i don't know if that's how they're supposed to look the little orange ones back here are getting all covered up so then you can't see them because these are i don't know what they're doing that's just too big kind of thing i need to better like organize the plant next year these are all doing okay i would say this the psyllium i'm never buying that again and then i think like these ones should be put in a pot with 
with like the other kind of pansies and violas. It's just maybe a little too big for this pot. Or not big, but like floppy. I don't know. But otherwise, everything else is doing okay. This pot is like that other whiskey barrel we were just looking at. And like this one is like completely covering this up. And these are doing pretty good. This one's huge. I don't know if I should trim it or if I should just leave it. But I feel bad for these ones down here. Now the Dianthes, I don't know if I'm particularly fond of those. I think in a pot hold their own it would be better and then this one's doing good but like look how big this is again and then it's covering up my impatience so i just need to make sure i put the colsus in their like own pots and then this is what i think would look good with those orange ones over there so i just need to be better about what i put with what next year and i've been making notes on my phone so i can get all beautiful pots but not so like i feel bad for my little impatience back and then this is on my all white pot i got two begonias and then like i'm gonna say these are like double and Impatience, and then these are like double begonias. I got a colsus, some impatience, and then some petunias back there. And that is all my pots. I hope you enjoyed the little flower tour. I'm gonna do a little plant flower check in with you guys. That one just has that little one left. The rest kind of died on me. But otherwise, everything else is doing pretty good. And then this one, these ones are sure trying. I don't even know. And then there's a begonia in there, and then these. I think I'm gonna move these to like over here kind of where I have this extra space we'll see these ones are doing good I kind of moved them off the s by the door because they were making a mess but those are looking good this one looks pretty good it's kind of where I water it right there in the middle so it has a weird kind of hole there and then all these are looking really good and then I like this one the best everything is grown probably the best for this one where that hasn't overpowered anything these really came back to life good when I put them in this pot this one I think I'm gonna replant these in a bigger pot because they tipped over on me and they keep tipping over these are all doing good the snapdragon look really good I still got a weird like hole right there and these ones have staying alive there's just not a lot of flowers on them so I could potentially put something there I think but we'll see blue ones doing pretty good these kind of fell down I don't know what the deal with that is these are standing up nice but the petunias kind of fell I want to say my cone flowers and my zinnias are doing really good and all these are doing good even that one I got a begonia in here and then everything on here is doing pretty good even the white ones over here are doing okay i keep trimming back that asparagus fern like i said before i went put that where i did again and then these ones too i really like these nick watered them for me when i sprained my ankle so he really did a good job but i really love this red color and i really love these too this one's okay but i really like those two so definitely hopefully try to find those again and then i got everything like these aren't doing so hot over here yeah they're like in there something that could be you know replanted almost so we'll see i'm gonna play around see what happens. okay we are going to do another flower update so this one's all doing pretty good i got the begonia that can't see much light but the petunia grew no impatient grew really well this one even did pretty good and then of course the closest and this had some in the back here as you can see i cut them off and then now look at my snapdragons are growing in nice so i don't feel too bad about trimming that off it's letting something else grow and then these colsus i did put the red flowers in here the petunias and then i moved the yellow more towards the middle and they're growing okay but this is just completely taken over but it has stood up really nice where like these more hot pink ones keep kind of tipping over on me these are the three pots that looks like one giant pot now i've trimmed the vines on everything multiple times and this one has stayed the same other than the pink petunia that was over there i moved over here and then those red petunias were in that little blue pot but otherwise this is the only a psyllium that lasted in these pots and I just think it wasn't getting enough sun back there. This pot is like that very first pot and I cut out all the closest back here because it kept tipping over and stuff so I just trimmed it all down and I was like well we'll just see what the snapdragons do. I even trimmed this one a little bit to see if I could get I think these are the dianthes to grow a little better. I mean and even over here the impatience kind of covering it up. So these I would definitely put kind of in their own 
container because they kind of get blocked by everything else. And then this is where I put that acillium I replanted in whatever this blue is. It's done really well in that little pot. There's some patients doing pretty good. Kind of droopy and then this is kind of dying out these pansies. I kind of just want to take it out of here because I think it looks like crap. Well, this one has, I forget what these are called. They're really big though. And then I put a begonia in here not too long ago and I moved one of these vines kind of back in there because this was all covering it. And then this was doing pretty good but it looks like it's kind of died now and then that closest is doing very good so i think these work really well with like the bigger plants august fern or asparagus fern or whatever it is why can't i think the name of these maybe those are these are the snapdragons the other ones are the salvia that's what it is so hopefully my salvia grows and then these have just been doing their thing there and then this is one of the four pots they were over in the corner and it kept tipping over because these got too tall and i just realized i have a little petunia over here that has done nothing so and those grow usually everywhere so i think these guys are just blocking them. i'm not gonna plant these guys again with like these low ones because when the dianthes you know like look that's gotten pretty big and room to move around next this is the one that i got at i want to say runnings all these flowers maybe i don't remember yeah i think it was running so these were doing better now they're kind of getting a little dead i don't know this is blocking it too much these did excellent and i really love the look of those my i want to say zinnias no cosmos and the zinnias after i started pruning them a little bit they are doing a little better otherwise they kind of keep tipping over and stuff back here the begonia is doing good but i don't like this that bugs me how it's all just like falling and stuff here's another brown pot where this dianthes did excellent impatient i got a petunia over here a marigold and then there was some colsus in here there's one i really liked it was from walmart and it was kind of had like scallops on the edges of the leaves but it stayed fairly low but it just got like all dead on me somehow so i pulled that out the other day and then this one i've trimmed this multiple times and this and this one's done really well these petunias have done good got impatience got the red wave petunias got the white dianthes and then more petunia this one's done really well i did keep this pretty trim which i should have probably done on the other ones and then my blue pot here everything's done really good i really like this salvia almost better than those other ones and these haven't gotten as big so that's kind of nice but these i think they're like tourmaline or tortelline or something they did really well when i replanted them in this pot but i don't know what's wrong with them over here they're just not doing anything and then, then this pot did lose one of these like double white flower but the begonias still did pretty good but i did lose one of these and then the red pot there's all the like the double whatever those did pretty well and then the colsus did well and then all these impatience i swear i bought petunias for this bucket but i don't maybe i didn't i don't, can't find them if i replanted them somewhere or they died on me. I have no idea. I thought I bought red and white petunias, but maybe I did not. That is how they are doing here. I think they're doing pretty well. I have lots of ideas for what I want to do next year. Keep my pots a little more balanced so they're not like tipping over like this one. This one did okay, I think. <laughs> It just looks kind of odd and I don't know if I would do an impatient in these small pots again just because it gets so big and overruns it. I think a dianthe would be really pretty in there and in this one too and I'm not doing impatience again because those just run all over. I did do a closest in that pot or coleus or whatever. It did work out pretty good. I got real big and then this one was doing better but I don't know if it's just getting blocked or what. I have ideas for where to put my pots next year too. That is another update. They started growing more over July and August and I really learned like what flowers work better together and which ones don't kind of like overshadow each other so for example on that the col col colsus or colsius should definitely be in their own pot they grow huge if you let them grow huge now you can trim them back and I did that with a few of mine and then they'll kind of let the rest of the pot grow but I feel like just put them in one pot all together they didn't really overshadow like the spiller I had in there or I don't think I had a spike with very many of them maybe one of them so I think you could still kind of do that but the spikes gonna get over just drowned out anyways because of how tall they get so that's kind of my plan for next year is to uh, um, put the closest all in one spot and I felt they did a little better up in the shade So those are ones I'm going to put on each side of the garage door that asparagus firm or the spagoodle or something one I put some in the middle of the pot kind of like a spike. I did not like that. They're very good Those grew forever. I could have still probably had them sitting out here, you know, mid-november They were still doing really well and those dusty millers the pansies and the viola 
kind of stand up and kind of not. So I don't know if I would like, those should be like one that kind of hang down in the front, almost like a spiller, just like the cilium. And then there was one, couple others too that were more like a flower, but kind of like a spiller. It was just kind of weird combo. I should do some research on those and see what I find out. I feel like the impatience and the begonias would look really good together. I feel like you could put one of those maybe pansies kind of or violas kind of in the front of those as like a spiller, but my impatience got really big this year. And so then they kind of outshadowed some other things and the impatience and the begonias weather the same. Like they kind of crapped out at the same time. They kind of grow at the same time. So that's kind of my thoughts like after I've seen my flowers grow pretty well here in July and August. Well, we are out here for another flower update. It is October 8th and yesterday morning it had froze overnight. We had frost on the Oliver's car, but some of them survived. So this is the big one by the garage here. And the only thing that really didn't survive was the closest. And I had trimmed those down before, so they were just coming back, but their leaves are all dried up. But everything else did fairly well on this. Now this closest has been dying for the last few days and I was just waiting to film and then show you guys it. So this one's going in the garbage today. It still has a few petunias but that's like the whole pot so that's ridiculous. Now now these three pots over here in the corner are still looking good. If you look really close you can see that they're getting dried out um, a little bit but overall they're still doing <laughs> <laughs> pretty good for October 8th. And then this other big one is doing pretty good. The impatient on this one did take a hit in the begonia a little bit. I did cut down the closest in this a while ago. And so these um, salvia have been growing really nice. And then here's one of the brown pots. And once again, it's the impatient that took the biggest hit and the rest of them are still doing pretty good. Now this one did, I mean, that those ones over there died a while ago and I pulled them out. But otherwise this one's doing really well. And then this, my little replant one still doing fairly well it's kind of like all crazy at the top but still got flowers and then this one with the snapdragon and those few little ones like these are the closest once again those did not like the frost and the begonia did okay if I clear that out it's gonna look kind of funny so I might have to rotate it to the back or something <laughs> and then these are the other two I can't barely see them, brown pots and once again we got the closest that died out and the marigolds didn't do so hot but those did pretty good this asparagus or August fern or whatever. This is an impatient. So those don't really like the frost. I see, huh? Oh, yeah, that just pulled right off. So I'm gonna clean these up a bit. I got one more to show you, or two. Yeah, and this was another impatient and like these begonias and some closias. So this one's trash. That one completely froze out. And then this is, um, some closest, but it's been like this for a while just because if it's getting colder, it wasn't as full. The begonia took a fair hit here. But like the zinnias are okay. Those, those are them. the cosmos. They're okay. And then these up front, not too bad. So we'll see what we do with this one. But I'm going to clean them up now and put them in the garbage. Because we've been trimming bushes and stuff. So I want to fill up the garbage can. October 25th. And this is how the bushes are looking. So some are dead. We've had definitely freezing and frost. But overall, they still look pretty good. It's supposed to be in the 30s next week. And Nick wants to clean out his green garbage can. So we are going to dump my pots out. So I wanted to give you one last look at them before I throw them in the garbage. Pretty crazy, they still look this good. Now here, after October, we're pretty much at the end. I have noticed what flowers will grow into the fall, which ones will die. First off, those Colseus died right away. The Dusty Miller, most of my petunias, the Salvia did really well, the Snapdragons did really well. The Cosmos and the big zinnias I had didn't like do well period because they just didn't have something to like hold them up. So next year my plan is to kind of put the snapdragons, the zinnias, the cosmos, and those asparagus firm kind of in a pot to make like a taller arrangement or even like in the back of a pot. But I feel like that asparagus firm would really help hold up those like flowers that get a little taller. Otherwise I thought they'd look just like they kind of always needed help in the back of those. I think the like Salvia lasted really long. The Dianthes lasted well. There was like zinnias that were smaller. I had a few of those die on me right away, but I had some white ones that I think did a lot better. So I want to try those again for next year. I've always wanted to do like a few different flowers in the same color, but 
You know what I mean? Like one pot's one color. I kind of did that with my red, white, and blue. So we'll see if I'll do that a little more. But I just got to be aware of what lasts the best throughout the fall. So then my pot have like all good plants and I can take them in the fall. And then the ones that kind of die in that first frost and stuff, they're just being one pot that I can get rid of. So that's kind of my thought for how to arrange them together. So that's kind of what I learned here at the end of October it was more of like what would make a good pot, like the taller flowers and the colseus together. I already knew that. But like just some of the other ones Ones that hadn't like fully grown yet for me and then what is going to winter weather well or fall weather well I should say I should say fall weather well one other thing I want to be more conscious of for next year is this like the sun and the shade and the part sun and stuff my front area gets sun and shade some a little more some a little less so I kind of want to see where I know the shade up by the garage is like one of the shadiest parts and like under my door then as you get out and more in the front that gets a little more sun so be more aware of that part of putting plants together also and then what weathers well that is all I have for my 2023 flower journey for you. I hope you enjoyed the little updates and the clips of all the flowers and how I kind of shifted things throughout the summer. I didn't shift much probably after like end of July, August. Things had died if they were going to die and things were flourishing if they were going to flourish. Hopefully next year I want to avoid all that just to like plan them, do a little research. I did put all these notes in my phone, so I'm gonna go back and look on that. I wanna do my big barrels like Colseus and then the ones up front and like a couple different flowers and with the fillers and the spillers and the thrillers. So I hope you will stay tuned for next year and I hope you enjoyed my pretty much green thumb this year. I'm gonna give myself a pat on the back. I hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching. Remember to hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.